What is it about my VO2 max that ends up, you know, putting me in a grave? Yeah. So here's what happens. When men cross below 18 milliliters per kilogram per minute, for women, it's about 15 to 16. It's what we call the line of independence. And what that means is basic tasks of everyday living represent so much oxygen utilization that you can't do anything. As an example, if your VO2 max is 15, things like getting dressed in the morning are about 12. Okay, uh, getting up from the toilet, 12 or 13. Walking, 14, 15. You imagine doing a, a workout where you're at literally at your maximum heart rate, just walking up your stairs. You shut down, right? And so what happens is it's multifaceted. Number one, cardiovascular, your heart is just no longer fit, right? The amount of blood pressure and the amount of stress your heart is under all day, just surviving um, is, is enormous. So what do you think happens to your HRV? What do you think happens to your sleep? What do you think happens to your global? This is a very stressed physiology. It gets worse than that though. You tend to stop doing things. So you, you socially isolate. Mm. You stop being around people. You stop having purpose and drive because you can't do anything. Mental health can decline because you, you don't feel like you're worth anything. So self-worth goes really low because you can't do anything by yourself. You can't even make your own breakfast. You can't. And so you start to just re, and so this thing just catapults. So it is a, it is a again, multifaceted problem. You could talk about just the ability to, you can't bring any utilized oxygen. You can't fuel your brain. You start to deteriorate, but then you can go all the way to the other end of the spectrum that I just said of like social isolation because you can't walk, you can't be in the world. You can't get out in the sunlight. Like you, you can't, your physical activity starts to plummet once leg strength. Leg strength specifically will tell you how long you'll be physically active. Once your legs get weak, you stop being physically active because everything gets really, really darn hard. So you're like, I'm not even gonna go for a walk. Why? Because I'm gonna be exhausted because my legs are gonna be shaking because my legs are so weak. So you tend to stop, you tend to sit, you tend to not want to move, and then all those other problems exist. And now what we what we call this is atrophy leads to atrophy. So atrophy is a loss of muscle. But now because we're weaker, we wanna do less things, which means it worse and worse, and we just spiral down. So not ever getting into that cycle is critically important. So why can't you wait until you're old? First of all, trainability is still really high. We've done training studies on people 80 years old. You can grow muscle and strength at 80. No question. In fact, almost as well as you can when you're in your 20s. But if you're starting at a VO2 max of 35 when you're 40 years old, how long until you cross below 20? Well, 1% per year, you can run the math there pretty quickly. You're going to cross that line of independence by 60, 65. And now I guess you can start working out but right, really, really challenging. Alternatively, you drive it as high as possible now. So when you see that decline over time, your buffer is much higher. Last point I'll make, I'm sure you got a hundred questions there. If you run that gamble and you get to 50 and you have any little thing go wrong, you got to have a hip replacement. You got to have something going on. And now you're bedridden for six weeks. Boom. You just fall off the cliff. Um, you get really busy at work. You got to take care of your mom who now these all these things that happen in real life and you can't work out as much. Great. So the, the way that we say this, like one of the, uh, the golfers I work with, John Rom, we were talking about this a couple weeks ago is why I bring it up. And he was like, yo, look, one of the strategies is we always control the things we can control. So there are parts of the golf game that you can't control the weather and what your opponents are doing. And so he always makes sure he gets really good at the things he can physically control. I would say the exact same thing right here. If you have the time right now and there's never a good time, but you can control it, you, you can work out, you have the ability, then you want to put that as high as possible because when things then come out of your control and you get hurt or work or all the gyms in the world shut down, like, you know, all these things that can happen, then, then you've got some buffer. But if you got no buffer, you're running a pretty high risk and you're running a risk of losing your health, which means you're not gonna be able to do anything.